when that chute opens, all my pain, all that emptiness just goes away. For eight seconds, it's like all I gotta do is hold on. Well, look here, old John Hawkins boy. He's fresh out the joint, you know. He don't ride like Daddy did. Hey, Doc. <laughs> My sweet baby girl. John. Virginia's cancer is bad. That's $160,000, YOLO. What the hell am I supposed to do now? I think we should start a conversation with Peter. We turned our back on him. Yeah, in my day, the goal was to stay on. Trying to go pro or win that cash. Don't win that money. Peter Hawkins is back in his house. All right. I think Dad is freaking out about money. Champs ain't made riding. They're made in them few seconds right after they fall. My dad, I don't want to know what he'd give up for Virginia. We got ourselves a Texas size showdown. You do anything for your sister. But everything is important to you. Am I talking to my wife right now to the sheriff? You stand for everything. Family, faith, and strong American values. We're not perfect, but we're trying to do what's right no matter what it takes. No matter how hard you fight. Need help raising my daughter. Whether you make it or not, right. we'll always chuck you. Always. I am a bull. Hello, everyone. My name is Heather Hurt with the NRW, where nerds rule the world, and I am here with Jake Allen, the writer and director, and actor of the new movie ride uh he plays peter the championship bull rider who just wants to kind of live up to his family legacy how are you doing today <laughs> i'm doing i'm doing well i love hearing uh other people's kind of summary of the movie i, I really i genuinely mean that it's, it's very interesting to see what people grab onto and 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 you it's so funny because i've never said it that way but i mean you just Honestly, you just nailed the whole movie. So, <laughs> well, I, I do want to say this uh, as, as a fellow North Texan. Uh, I think I think I could connect. <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. Where are you at? Um, well, I, I'm in, out of our our channels out of DC, but I'm from uh, I'm from Coppell, north of Dallas. Sure, of course. Yeah. Uh, nice. So, Coppell Cowboys, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, I'm sorry, getting distracted. Getting distracted. Uh, Right, it's your directorial debut. How did that feel? And what did you learn from it, especially as an actor as well? Um, it felt wonderfully pressurized. Um, I've, I've certainly never been under so much pressure. You know, you're, you're the director, you're the you're the leader, whether you like it or not. Um, but it also, you know, gives you that chance to everything you always said you wanted to do on a set that you were frustrated didn't happen when you were just an actor or just a writer. And it's like, okay, here you go. Good luck, buddy. You know? Um, and I, I like, I like that, you know, I grew up playing football and I grew up playing baseball and I always wanted the ball. I wanted to be the pitcher. I wanted to be the, the wide, I was wide receiver. You know, I always wanted to, to be the guy with the ball at the end of the game. And at least if we lost, then I could be like, well, I had, it was on me. Um, and I, I kind of felt like that with this movie. And, you know, originally I wasn't going to direct it and we were looking around for directors. And I just was like, I don't think anybody's going to care as much as me. And I know I don't know about all the technical stuff and cameras and equipment and whatever, but I know I love the cowboy hat. And I know I want to do, do this story, do this story proud. And to tell it honestly, you know, I, I hope the movie holds up a mirror to, to the cowboy and the rural community to show the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, um, didn't you just do it honestly? And uh, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't let anybody else direct it. That, that's completely fair. It's, <laughs> it's always better to be your own boss, even if you, yeah. you know where you're going. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, tell us about the story a little bit. Um, this seemed very personal. And, and as you were saying, it's, you know, you wanted to do the cowboy proud um, because yeah. what many people don't know the cowboy and what the cowboy represents are two very different things. Mm -hmm. um, so why, how, how did this story come about? Where did it come from? Yeah. I mean, at a, you know, the elevator pitch is, is the movie is about a, a, a very fractured family, a family built on, three generations of bull riders and a, and a mother who's the sheriff who is kind of at rock bottom because the youngest daughter in the family has cancer and they're kind of very divided because of this. But over the course of the movie, you know, this tragedy is kind of what ends up bringing them all together in a way they, they never thought possible. And then, you know, at the heart of the story is this young bull rider, my character who's just gotten out of prison and kind of gets it into his, his mind and his soul that, you know, if he can win this rodeo and win some money for the family and for his, his kid sister, that maybe he can gain some redemption and, and maybe the family will kind of let let him back in. And what a beautiful, but also kind of cowboy, you know, na cowboy naive, if you will, thing to think of like, well, if I just cowboy up, if I just go ride a bull for eight seconds, all will be forgotten. You know, and it's life is that simple and it's not that simple at the same time. And, you know, we definitely wanted to make a, a rodeo movie and a sports movie. But as you know, with rodeo, it is a sport, but it's also it's a way of life. And really, even more than a sports movie, we wanted to tell a rodeo movie that was about that that way of life, even more than that sport. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, it's when if you if you grow up, especially in North Texas, you go to the rodeo in San Antonio, some some in South Texas. Uh, you you go to the rodeo at least two times a year, and you go with your school, like it's part of your life. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you and, ever? And love, go ahead, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna say one thing I love about the rodeo is like the first thirty minutes isn't even events; it's just celebration. You know what I mean? It's pageantry. Um, and I'm always reminded every rodeo I, I go to, I'm, re I'm reminded that like some of my favorite parts of the rodeo are just when they sing the national anthem and, and have the horse run around the arena, you know, like that's a part of the sport too, which I just think is so beautiful. It is a very, and, it, and you, sh and you see it, like, it's a very personal moment, especially like when all the lights turn off and, and you as Peter, you're just standing there. You're like, I know that feeling. Yeah. Uh, totally right. Can feel I'm that. Excited right now. I'm ready to go ride. <laughs> uh, did you do uh, th just a simple question? Did you do uh, any of the bull riding yourself? Did you have you ever done it before in your life? I've done it before, mostly in training for this movie. Um, we had a wonderful stunt cowboy coordinator named Jody Stelzik from um, Lockhart, Texas, and I actually went to live kind of in his back trailer for a little while, researching for this movie. And he kind of became my bull riding coach, and uh, he taught me just so much great stuff. Um, and so most of the bull riding I did was just in training for the movie. And then I did a little bit of it in the training scenes. But then when it got to like the big rodeo scenes, I had an awesome stunt rider, this guy, Reed Arnold, who we shot the movie at a live rodeo. We actually integrated our movie into a live event. And this guy was such a badass. He competed in the actual rodeo that we were shooting at and did all my stunts. So he would go ride a bull. And he won the rodeo, by the way, side note, he would go ride a bull, you know, get in the first place, check the standings, whatever, run over to us, put my clothes on for my care, my, you know, wardrobe, go ride our bull, then go take like 10 minute break, go ride another bull for the rodeo. I mean, it's, it's insane. It was so cowboy. And he never said a word and, he, and it was like nothing. You know, I think, again, like didn't brag about it. We were like, did you, did you win? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I won. Of course, of course, you know, it's casual, yeah. super casual. Yeah, super casual. It was amazing. <laughs> when um, the, the movie premieres on June 14th um, in, in select theaters and on and on demand, um, mm -hmm. what would you, what's the number one thing you want audiences to walk away with when, when they're watching this? Man, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope cowboys that watch it really feel honored and really the whole rural community, I man, that's really what we made the movie for or who we made the movie for. And we also made it with them. I think that's something I'm, I'm super proud of. Again, we shot, we shot at live rodeos. We shot at working ranches. You know, a lot of the, either the actors in the movie, like C. Thomas Howell and 40 J. Smith. I mean, they're both just real cowboys. 
um, who became actors. And then a lot of the other kind of side characters and cowboys throughout the movie are just not even actors. They're just real cowboys that, that offered to help tell this story. So I hope that that community really feels heard and seen with this movie. And then I hope that other folks who maybe, like you said, you know, you grew up going to the rodeo and I hope people who didn't grow up going to the rodeo can watch a movie and really feel like they've been to a rodeo. Um, and you don't even have to leave your couch. <laughs> um, you know, I, I hope people can go, oh, wow, that I didn't quite know it was like that. You know, I didn't know about the pageantry. I didn't know it was such a way of life. I didn't know there was so much heritage and pride involved in, in that sport and that way of life. So that's what I, that's my hope. Very sweet, very sweet. Um, the music. Let's talk a little bit about the music because you had some very strong um, lyric lyrics going on, like lyrically strong. There we go. There's what I'm looking for. Lyrically song. <laughs> I'm looking here. Lyrically strong music. music. What what made you pick uh, the music that you picked? Uh, the main character in the movie isn't my character. It isn't C. Thomas's character. It's the world. It's Stephenville, Texas. It's small town America. That's the main character. And when your main character is the location, is the world, the music of the film ends up being that character's dialogue, I always say. So that's why the music was so important. And I tried to always pick music that reflected, you know, history, legacy, pain, but also resilience. And, you know, with a guy like Bones Owens, who was our music producer and, and did four original songs for the film, or four of his songs are in the film. Uh, Lacey K. Booth, who's from Livingston, Texas, um, you know, grew up, was very much this character of Libby. Uh, our composer, you know, I, I, I had our composer um, write songs before we even shot the movie, which is something fairly unique that a lot of movies, particularly indies, don't get the, the privilege to do, to have a composer on that early. And I just gave him the script and we talked about this world and these communities and then just kind of sent him on his way. And he came back with with 10 tracks that really ended up, you know, we started editing almost backwards to where like what would go, what, what images would go well with this song and just started this very unique collaboration. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if that quite answers your question, but Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, Jake. I really appreciated your time. Ride hits uh, select theaters on June 14th, as well as on the, on demand. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, all right.